Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now, Superman. Mighty visitor from another world with powers and abilities never before realized by mortal men. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Race a speeding bullet to a target. Crush steel with his bare hands. Superman, champion of the weak and the oppressed. Courageous fighter for truth and justice. Who mingles with ordinary men as mild-mannered Clark Kent, reporter for the Daily Planet, a great metropolitan newspaper. As our story opens today... Clark Kent is about to leave the Daily Planet building when he is hailed by young Jimmy Olsen, a red-headed, freckle-faced copy boy who works in the editorial department of the paper. Listen. Ted, can I see a minute? Hi, what's up, Jimmy? Four alarm fire? No, it's, it's nothing to do with the paper, Mr. Kent. It's, well, it's sort of personal. If you're in a hurry and you haven't got time... No, no, all the time in the world, Jimmy. I'm in Mr. White's office. He's gone for the day. Hey, now we can talk without having to shout over the racket of those typewriters and news tickers. What's on your mind, Jimmy? You look worried. I am worried, Mr. Kent. It's about my mother. She's sick, Jimmy? No, she's all right. At least she's all right now. Well, what do you mean? I guess I'd better start from the beginning so you'll know what it's all about. Uh -huh, all right. You see, my father owned a candy store on Spruce Street. Uh -huh. When he died three years ago, my mother went to work in the store and kept it running pretty good. Oh, all by herself, eh? Yes, but she doesn't complain. Not Mom. She wouldn't have even told me about Chip Dinelli if I hadn't caught her crying. Chip Dinelli? The racketeer? What's he got to do with your mother in the candy store? I'll tell you, Mr. Kent. About a month ago, a man came into the store and told my mother that unless she paid $20 a week protection money to Chip Dinelli, the store might be wrecked. What? And has she paid him? Yes, sir. A hundred dollars so far. And he's coming tonight for another 20 Jimmy... Are you sure Dinelli is behind this? Absolutely. Ours isn't the only store he's taking money from. All the stores on Spruce Street pay. Uh -huh. The guy who comes around is just Dinelli's collector. You say he'll be there tonight? Yes. That's why I wanted to talk to you. Mom can't pay any And why should she? This is a free country, Mr. Kent. And no crook's got a right no, to... No, no, no. Take it easy, Jimmy. We'll fix Mr. Dinelli. I'll go down to the store with you and meet his collector. Gee, Mr. Kent, would you? Sure, but remember, Jimmy, not a word about this to anyone. Rats like Danelli must be handled privately. I'll get your hat and coat. No time oh, to waste. Gee, thanks, Mr. Kent. I'll see you at the elevator. Ten minutes later, Jimmy and Kent approach the candy store on Spruce Street. This is the store, Mr. Kent. Mom's behind the counter. Now, wait a minute, Jimmy. You say all the stores on this street pay protection money to Dinelli? That's right. Schultz the butcher didn't pay last week. Oh? So he got a brick thrown through his window. See it right across the street. Yes, there's not much window left. And what did the police do about it? They couldn't do anything. They said no evidence. My mother can tell you more about that. Come on, let's go in. All right. Oh, what makes it so late, Jimmy? Oh, I hung around the office for a while. Mom, this is Mr. Kent. He's the best reporter on the Daily Planet. Oh, I'm afraid Jimmy's given to exaggeration, Mrs. Olsen. Well, he's told me a lot about you, Mr. Kent. He thinks you're wonderful. Oh, yeah. It's nice to know that somebody does. Mom, I told Mr. Kent about Chip Dinelli and the racket he's pulling. Jimmy, you shouldn't have. You promised you wouldn't mention it to a soul. No, it's quite all right, Mrs. Olsen. I want to help you. Oh, you can't help me. Nobody can. There's only one thing left for me to do. Give up the store. Oh, I won't let you do that, Mom. I'll go to Jip Dinelli myself. I'll tell you. Just what... a minute, Jimmy. You won't have to give up the store, Mrs. Olson. I've been up against men like Dinelli before, and I think I know how to handle them. I understand his collector is coming tonight. Well, what time does he usually arrive? Well, I should be here any minute now. Oh? But, Mr. Kent, now please don't start any trouble. They said that... I know what they said, Mrs. Olson. But don't you worry. Jimmy and I will hide behind the counter. When the collector comes in, refuse to pay him. Oh, no, no, I can't do that. They'll do something to Jimmy if I don't pay No, they won't do a thing, I promise you. Just you refuse to give him the $20. I'll take care of the rest. All right, Jimmy, duck down. What are you going to do, Mr. Kent? Tell Mr. Dinelli's collector where he gets off. But, but supposing he pulls a gun. Well, guns don't frighten me. I mean, 
Well, he, he won't pull a gun, Jimmy. Here he comes now, Mr. Cairns. Steady, Mrs. Olsen. Don't be afraid. Okay, lady. I'll take the protection payment. Twenty bucks. Well, I... I'm not going to give it to you anymore. Oh, no? Take a look across the street, lady. See what happened to Schultz's window because he didn't have protection? You want that to happen to your window? Well, I... I can't pay you anymore. I, I haven't the money. Ah, don't give me that stuff. Pony up and make it fast. This is my last step, and I ain't got no time to waste. Well, you'd better find some time, because I want to talk to you. <laughs> Where'd you come from? Behind the counter? I heard everything you said, and so did Mrs. Olson's son. Now, unless you and your crooked boss, Danelli want to spend some time behind bars for extortion and blackmail, you'll return every penny you took from this woman and never bother her again. Oh, yeah? Who are you? My name is Kent. Clark Kent. I'm a reporter for the Daily Planet. A star reporter, too. Shut up, you. So you're a reporter. You write pieces for the paper, huh? Well, write this one. Oh! Oh! oh. Hey. Walk over the 20, lady. Yes. Here it is. So long, wise guy. Mr. Kent. Mr. Kent. Are you all right? I'm all right, Jimmy. Just a little surprised. Gee, I thought he knocked you out. No, not quite. Oh, you see, Mr. Kent. I told you not to try to do anything. It's impossible. They're just not human. I haven't given up, Mrs. Olson. One punch doesn't frighten me off. I'll get every cent of your money back and teach Danelli a lesson he won't forget. All you're doing is risking your life. Don't you worry about that. I'll see you tomorrow, Jimmy. Good night, Mrs. Olson. Good night. Oh, too bad I had to take that punch in the jaw. I was itching to tear that rat apart right in the store, but it wasn't the time or the place for Superman to do his stuff. I'll just take a run over to Danelli's place and have a little talk with him. Here it is, Chip. Six hundred smackers. Like taking candy from babies. <laughs> Even Schultz the Butcher paid up without a squawk. No trouble at all? Oh, yeah, little, but I tripped the guy and that finished it. What guy? Uh, some mugger was hiding behind a counter in Oso's candy store. Said he was a newspaper reporter, but then they make kin. A reporter? Yeah. What paper, Spike? I forget. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, the Daily Planet. He shouldn't have clipped him. You think I want the newspapers on my neck? Well, what do you want me to do? Stand there and take the scuff? He was shooting his mouth off about blackmail and extortion. All right, all right, forget it. Tell Tony to get me a pack of cigarettes. Okay. Main, 4826. Hello? Louis? Yeah, what's up, boss? Tomorrow, a newspaper called The Daily Planet may publish a story about how the stores on Spruce Street are paying me protection money. Yeah? I want all those papers bought up the minute they hit the stands. Every one of them. You got it? Okay, boss. Chip. Chip. Chip, he's here. Who's here? That reporter, Kent. Tony let him in. He's waiting in the soundproof room. Let me finish him, Chip. Let me get him out of the way. Uh, don't be a fool. Want to get us in a jam? I'll talk to him. Well, you better be careful. Don't worry. I'm always careful. Now you stay here. Hey, what is this, a gag? Nobody here? Oh, yes, there is, Danelli. I just thought I'd wait for you in the closet. Hey, is somebody trying to kid me? Spike said a reporter was waiting. Not a guy in a circus outfit. Clark Kent couldn't wait, so he asked me to keep the appointment. You'll get used to these blue tights and red cape if you keep on robbing poor shopkeepers, Danelli. Why, are you... Get out. Get out before I'll I... I'll get out the moment you hand over the $120 you took from Mrs. Olson. And as soon as I teach you how to behave like a decent human being. Get out or I'll plug you. That gun won't do you a bit of good, Danelli. Fortunately, I see this room is soundproofed. Get back or I'll shoot. Go ahead. Nothing happened. Right you are. And now it's my turn. There goes your gun. 
Hey, hey, what do you think you're here? You go. I, 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 help, help, let me go. Not until you learn an important lesson. Let's see how you bounce off the wall. Oh, ah, not bad, not bad at all. Tell him me. Not quite, Tinelli. Another bounce. Oh, stop. Stop, I'll do anything. All right, let me have a hundred and twenty dollars. Oh, sure. Here it is. Good. Oh, now, this was only a sample, Tinelli. The next time you try your extortion racket, you won't walk for a month. Understand? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Well, then I'll leave. Through the window. Oh. Remember, Denali. Remember. Spike. Spike. Oh. Spike. Come on, Jim. I'm coming. Uh. Hey, what happened? You're all messed oh, up. Never mind what happened. Listen to me. You, you call that old woman... If she squealed, we'd take care of her, didn't you? Yeah, sure. What what time did she close her store up? Ten o'clock. And who's with her? Just her and her kid. Okay. You and Tony take the big car and get down there. When she comes out of the store, teach her a lesson. But how, Chief? It's about time you knew how. Show her and her kid it don't pay to squeal. Come on, get caught. <laughs> Oh, Mom, please don't cry. The only reason I told Mr. Kent about it was so that you wouldn't have to pay that crook Danelli $20 a week. Please, Mom. Oh, I know, Jimmy. But you shouldn't have told anyone. I begged you not to. But, gee, Mom, how did I know Clark Kent was going to just stand there and let that collector knock him down? I thought he could fight. No, fighting will only make matters worse. No, oh, there's only one thing left for me to do. Close up the store and then... Mom, look. He's coming across the street. Who, Jimmy? Mr. Kent, look. Well, you probably didn't expect me back, did you? Mr. Kent, I don't want to appear ungrateful. I know you mean well. But I don't want any trouble with those gangsters. Oh, please don't stir up trouble. I'm not stirring up anything, Mrs. Olson. I just have some good news. Here's the $120 Danelli's collector took from you. And I don't think he'll bother you again. Mr. Kent, jump in, Jiminy. Now, the next thing to do is to expose Danelli on the front page of the Daily Planet. And, if possible, run him out of the city. Mr. Kent, where did you get this money? Well, never mind where I got it. It's yours. Every penny of it. Did you get it from Danelli? <laughs> Jimmy, a good newspaper man never reveals secrets. If you did get it from Danelli, Mr. Kent, you're Superman. <laughs> Hardly, Jimmy. Not Superman. Why, Mr. Kent, I... Well, I can't believe it. It seems like a dream getting the money back. And you say they won't bother me anymore? Well, that means I can keep the store. That's just what it means. Well, I guess I'll run along now. Get down bright and early in the morning, Jimmy. You can help me write the story. We'll splash it across the front page. I sure will, Mr. Kent. All right. Good night, Mr. Kent. Good... Oh, thank you so much. Oh, good night, Mrs. Olsen. Good night, Bye, Jimmy. But even as Clark Kent departs, a black sedan pulls up at the curb opposite Mrs. Olsen's little candy store. Okay, Tony, cut the motor. Right. Is that the place, Spike? Yeah, we're lucky. They're still there. The kid and his old lady. What time is it? Uh, 9.30. Now, they'll be closing up soon, now. Now, listen. What we do is this. When they come out, we follow them, you see? There's too many lights on this street. Well, we'll follow them, too. They'll turn in on a side street where it's darker. What are you going to do? Get out of the car and follow them. Chip said to teach him, but don't pay to squeal. I don't like fooling with kids and dames. Well, me neither, but they got it coming to him. Tip it off a reporter. Hey, look. Huh? They're putting out the lights. See, they're closing up. Keep low. Yeah, they're coming out of the store. You sure that's them? Yeah, the kid's red at it. Now let them get a block ahead of us. Okay. Keep an eye peeled for cops, Mike. Yeah, come on. Pile out, though. Let's go. Huh? That's so fast. I said to keep a block behind them. All right, all right. You don't think it's so jittery? Who's jittery? You are. Wait a minute. They turned into Second Street. That block is plenty dark. Easy, easy. There they are, up ahead on the left side of the street. All right now. Say when. Not yet. Not yet. Spike, there's a police car coming up. All right, duck in this doorway. Come on. They're at us. Shut up. Boy, oh boy, I sure thought them bulls met a pinch, Spike. Now who's jittery? 
Hey, where's that kid and this old lady? Come on, let's get going. I see him in the middle of the block. Come on, now. Hey, you, come here. Hey, let go of me. Not till I hey. teach your old lady something about squealing. You leave the boy alone. Oh. Yeah. Uh, screaming ain't going to help you, sister. Come here, you brat. I'll fix you. Not before I fix you. Oh, what hit me? I hit you, and there's more where that came from. Oh, oh, oh. oh well, he thought I was fooling, did he? Well, I'll show you I'm not. Oh, oh. Drowning, drowning, beat it. There's a big guy. He's crazy. Beat it. Go ahead, run for your lives. Too bad I can't follow you through the streets, but I know where to find you and your boss in case I want you. Now, I'd better see what happened to the Olsons, as Clark Kent. Jimmy. Jimmy, you all right? Mr. Kent. Where'd you come from? When I walked out of your store, I saw that car stop, and it looked suspicious, so I followed it. But Jimmy, your mother's fainted. She got scared when the man went to hit me. Where do you live, Jimmy? The next house. I'll carry your mother up. There we are. All right, lead the way. Gee, Mr. Kent, it was lucky you came along. Yeah. That guy was all set to hit me. Did you recognize him? Who was the, he? He was Donnelly's collector. Oh. I couldn't see his face. Oh, but I knew his voice, though. This door here. Okay. I'll turn on the light. Oh, that's fine. There we are. Now she'll be comfortable on this couch. Get some cold water and a towel, Jimmy. Okay, won't take a second, Mr. Kent. Lucky kid. Not a whimper out of him. Any other kid would have been frightened stiff. Here you are, Mr. Kent. Oh, good. Is my mother all right? Well, she will be in a moment. Wow. Uh, she's coming around. Jimmy. Jimmy, where are you? Right here, Mom. I'm okay. Mr. Kent saved us. Mr. Kent, uh... Oh, I didn't see you. I'm terribly sorry this had to happen, Mrs. Olson. I never dreamed Danelli would try to pull anything after the... after the talk I had with him. Oh, Mr. Kent, it was horrible. That man grabbing Jimmy. Now, now, don't you think about it. Just get some rest. I've got to get back to the office and see Mr. White. We'll splash this story across the front page. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll have Lois Lane come over and spend a few hours with you. She'll be company for you, Mrs. Olson. Oh, it isn't necessary, Mr. Kent. I'll be all right. Oh, Lois won't mind. Where's my hat, Jimmy? Right here, Mr. Kent. Good night, Mrs. Olson. Uh, you can show me to the door, Jimmy. Good night, and thank no, you. No, not at all. Now, Jimmy, don't let your mother get up for a while, eh? Mr. Kent, did you really chase those gangsters away? I... I suppose so, Jimmy. Why, well, what makes you ask? I thought I saw a man in a red cape flying, oh, sort of. Oh, you're tired, Jimmy. You'd better get some rest, too. I'll see you in the morning. Okay. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, thought he saw a man in a red cape flying, eh? I've got to be careful. Too many people are seeing me as Superman. But there's one person who's going to see me and not like it so much. Jip Dinelli. Tomorrow I'll clean his place out and make certain he leaves town. For good. Or my name isn't Superman. But even as Clark Kent utters the threat, the long black sedan pulls up in front of Jip Nadelli's headquarters on the far side of town and Spike gets out hurriedly. A moment later, he enters Dinelli's private office. Well? Boss, I hate to tell you, but we had trouble. What do you mean? Well, everything worked like a top. We trailed the kid and his old lady to a dark side street. Go on. Well, Tony pulled over at the curb and hopped out to grab me, you see... I had a grip on the kid when a guy came out of nowhere and clipped me. Who was it? I don't know. It was a big guy with an awful wallop. Before I could make a movie, let me have it. What happened? Well, I ran for the car and we got away just in time. Did he follow you? No, we cut over at the river and doubled back. Nobody followed. Was the guy who clipped you that reporter, Clark Kent? Him? I don't know, Jip. This guy was big. Awful big. Sounds like Kent behind this. You say he worked for the Daily Planet? Yeah, that's what he said. The Olsen kid works for the planet, too. So what? I got an idea. Maybe a good one. Hand me that telephone book. Okay. What's up, Chip? You'll see. Uh, here it is. And this is Henry Olsen. Store, residence. Logan, 6251. Operator, get me Logan, 6251. And what you calling her for, Jip? Hey, you'll see. Hello? Hello, Jimmy. This is Clark Kent. Mr. Kent? Hey, 
made your voice sound funny. There uh, must be something wrong with the phone connection. Listen, Jimmy, I haven't got much time. I've got to see you right away. But you just left my house a little while ago, Mr. Kent. Yes, I know. Something came up. I need your help. It, uh, it, it's about Donnelly. Can you meet me at the corner of Spruce and 2nd Street in 10 minutes? Gee, Mr. Kent, I don't want to leave Mom. She's asleep now. Miss Lane just got here. Who? Lois Lane. Oh, sure. Uh, bring her along. It's newspaper business. All right, Mr. Kent. I'll be there with Miss Lane. Good. See you in 10 minutes. That's not luck. I don't know what it is. What do you mean? The kid told me a dame named Lois Lane is at his house. I know who she is. A reporter for that same paper, the Daily Planet. So what? How can you be so dumb? What do you mean, so what? Well, supposing she is a reporter for the paper. We don't want that paper to print nothing about us, do we? No. Well, they won't. Not now. We'll meet the kid and that lame girl, and we'll take them for a ride. A nice little ride in the country. Get the car ready. Mrs. Olsen was so upset after Donnelly's men attacked her and Jimmy that I asked Lois Lane to spend a few hours there. Can you imagine men attacking a woman and a boy, Mr. White? Donnelly and his kind aren't men, Kent. They're rats. I know. And there's only one way to handle rats. Drive them out in the open and shoot them down. Fortunately, we... we can't do that. With bullets? No. But with words? Yes. Now, you get all the facts, Kent. All right. Write this story as you've never written one before. I'll give it all the front page space it'll take. I know you'd feel that way about it, Mr. White. And why shouldn't I? The trouble with this country is that we're too lenient with Dinelli and people like him. They belong in a country where they have a dictator and concentration camps. Uh, it makes my blood boil when I think of the millions of decent men and women who would give anything to live here in America, but instead, they have to suffer while Dinelli robs poor shopkeepers. Hey, I'll put that in the story, Mr. White. Well, you make every word sizzle, Kent. Yes, sir. Stop at nothing. But be sure of your facts. Well, Jimmy knows everything that's happened. I'll get them from him. Mr. Kent, Mr. Kent. Well, who's that? It's like Jimmy. Mr. Kent. What? Jimmy, what's the matter? Miss Lane, well, I, I ran all the way. Well, well, what, what happened? A man called up, said he was you, Mr. Kent. What? It didn't sound like you, but I believed him. What did he say? He said to meet him at the corner of Spruce and 2nd Street and to bring Miss Lane. Yes, and did you? Yes. Miss Lane didn't want to do it, but I talked her into it. Oh. When we got down to the corner, two men jumped down on us. Go on, Jimmy, go on. I got loose. And Miss Lane yelled at me to run, but I didn't know what I was doing. And what happened to Lois? They, they pushed her in the car and drove away, and I looked around for a cop, but there wasn't any. So I came here. Danelli, it couldn't be anyone else. He's got Lois. Kent, where are you going? Got to look into something, Mr. White. You keep Jimmy here and send someone over to stay with Mrs. Olsen. I'll be back soon. Oh, I'm responsible for all this. I've got to do something about it fast. If Lois is at Danelli's place, I shouldn't have much trouble. Uh, no time to take the elevator down. The window will do. Up with it. And out. Like an arrow shot from a bow, Superman streaks across the darkened city in the direction of Dinelli's headquarters. His only thought to rescue Lois Lane from the racketeer's clutches. His only hope that he reach there before any harm comes to her. Faster. Faster until he swoops down like a great bird and lands in the concrete driveway alongside a three-story house. There. Don't think anyone saw me. Those clouds were conveniently low. Now, let's see. Nellie's office was on the third floor. Well, I'll climb up and sneak through a window. Quietly. There. Not so easy clinging to the sill. Now, up with the window. Gently. There. And into the room. Hmm. Looks dark and deserted. I hope I'm not too late. Wait. I hear something. A man talking in the next room. Okay, boss. I'll be there in an hour. Yeah, sure. I'll bring the door with me. Goodbye. You'll be where in an hour? Hey, where'd you come from? Never mind that. Where are you going? To Denali? Get away. Get away, or I... You won't do anything. Hey, hey. Now talk, or I'll break your part. Hey, let me go. Let me go. Oh. I can't do nothing. Where's Denali? You were just talking to him on the phone. Where is he? I don't know. I, I swear I don't know. Now, oh, I'll stop, refresh stop. your memory. Let's see whether you bounce like your boss did up against the wall. Oh, no more. No more. Oh. Will you talk? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk. All right. Get up on your feet. Stop. Don't do that. Come back here. Oh. A fool. Dove out the window to the concrete driveway three stories below. 
Well, this is the last racket he'll ever be mixed up in. Crowd's gathering. I'd better go. Can't afford to be seen here. Out the back and away! Suddenly, Mr. White. Where on earth have you been? Well, I had an idea, but it didn't work. Uh, close the door and sit down. Now, uh, this is the time for action, Kent. Fast action. Yes, but what can we do? Where can we turn, Mr. White? Lois isn't at Danelli's hangout. Well, how do you know? Well, I... I don't know, really. I, I just have a hunch. Well, Kent, we can't work on hunches. This is much too serious. We'll have to notify the police. No, I... I wouldn't do that if I were you, Mr. White. Why not? Well, I'm just afraid of what might happen to Lois. Jimmy here can tell how Danelli threatened his mother. They said if she called the cops, they'd, they'd beat her up. Well, maybe you're right. Well, one thing we can do is to make use of the Daily Planet. Now, I've got a story all set for the first edition tomorrow. Had a rewrite man get the facts from Jimmy here and knock it out. Oh, good. Yeah, listen to this banner head. Planet reporter Mrs. Racketeer believed responsible for... City desk. White speaking. Clark Kent, sir. Who? Clark Kent. Now, uh, hold on. It's for you, Kent. Thanks, Mr. White. Hello. Is this Clark Kent of the Daily Planet? Yes, I'm Clark Kent. Mr. Kent? Yes? If one word about my business is printed in your paper, Miss Lois Lane may run into trouble. Who is this talking? Danelli is the name, Kent. Mr. White, have this call traced. It's Danelli. I'll keep him on. We, uh, we hadn't intended printing anything about you, Danelli. If you'll send Miss Lane back, why, I'm, I'm sure... I'm good and ready, Kent, and not before. You've been crossing me up too much. This time, I'm taking no chances. I'll wait and see what your paper says before I make a move. So long, Tucker. Was that really Danelli, Mr. Kent? I got it, Kent. I've got it. Good. On the other phone. Yes? He was calling from a drugstore booth in Little Falls. Little Falls. That's a town about 50 miles from here. I'll leave at once, Mr. White. Now, hold on. I'm going with you. What? Yes, we can take my car. This time, I'm going to be in on the kill. But Mr. White, I... Well, I want to crack at Danelli, personally. Mr. White, I, I can get there much faster alone. Huh? Well, what do you mean? Well, I... That is... Nothing doing, nothing doing. I'm coming along. Can I go, Mr. White? You? Of course not. Oh, please, Mr. White, I won't be in the way. Jimmy wants to learn how to be a reporter, and... Well, after all, it is his story. Are you mad, Kent? Taking a kid up to a place... I'm not a kid, Mr. White. I'm 14. Oh, well, all right. But you're responsible for him, Kent. I'll watch him. Gee, thanks a million, Mr. Kent. All right, Kent. now, before we leave, I want to okay this story. Now, Mr. White, you can't print that story. What? I didn't tell you, but Danelli said if we printed one word about him, Lois would suffer. Uh, uh, Kent, you're right. You're right, he's got us blocked. Uh, but not for long. Come on. I'm itching to get my hands around Danelli's throat. And when I do, it'll be tough too fast. <laughs> But even as Clark Kent, Editor White, and Jimmy Olsen speed northward through the night, two men converse in the front room of a cabin located on the edge of a dense pine forest, two miles above the town of Little Falls. One of them is Dip Denelli. The other, his henchman, Spike. Listen. Yeah, it's pretty near midnight. Let's keep him, Tony. Said he'd be here in an hour. Well, maybe he had a flat chip. You can't tell. Oh, what did that reporter Kent have to say when you call him up? Hey, what could he say? Don't you worry. That paper won't print nothing about me. Not while we got the lane girl. Well, what you gonna do with her, Chip? Well, that all depends. Say, I ain't heard her yelling lately. She all right? Yeah, tied up in the back room. Yeah, I guess she got tired. Where's that briefcase with the records of collections we made from the storekeepers? I tossed it in the back room. Uh, but... I think it's safe for her in there? Sure. She'd have to be a Houdini to get loose. I wish Tony would get here with that dough. I was a fool to leave it in the house. With some dough, I can start paying off a few guys and quiet this thing up. He'll be here, Chip, unless he's dead. What do you mean? Well, gee, for gosh, well, well, uh, I was only kidding, Chip. Can't you take a joke? There's no time for joking. See what the girl's doing. Uh, she's all right. Chip! Chip, she's gone. Out the window. What? The briefcase is gone, too. Briefcase gone? Yeah, she took it with her. Wait, here's a flashlight. Look, you can see her tracks on the mud. She went into the woods. Oh, after her, quick. Look out, you fool. The kerosene stole. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, of course you didn't, you clumsy ape. Now, look at it. 
kerosene burning all over the floor. Now you can't put it out. The woods can't hit. Get back. Come on outside. It'll pop like a torch in a minute. Gee, it sure is burning. What about the girl in the woods, Chip? Ah, forget about her. We got to think about ourselves. We'll go back to town and pick up that dough. I can't wait any longer for Tony. It's risky hanging around here. Some of them farmers will come running when they see this fire. Well, how about them papers, Chip? The ones in the briefcase. The wind's blowing the fire over to the woods. I don't think there'll be very much left of them papers. Dan, listen. Listen, Spike. You sure that lame girl took the briefcase with her? Well, you looked for it yourself, didn't you? Yeah, it wasn't anywhere in that room. What difference does it make? If it's gone, it's gone, ain't it? Yeah, if it's gone. If it ain't, it can make a lot of difference. How? What's the matter? You that dumb? There's papers in that briefcase. And then papers tell all about our collections back in town. Who we tapped and for how much. What if somebody finds it, Chip? I'm counting on the fire to fix those papers for good. Yeah, but what if somebody gets in there to put out the fire? Don't worry. They got a fine chance of doing that. Why not? For two reasons, Spike. Number one, in another 20 minutes, the woods will be like a furnace. Number two, the road's blocked. Oh, that's what you was doing while I got out the car. If anybody takes the road back to that cabin, Spike, they'll find a big tree down, right in their way. Yeah? And if they try to move the tree, well, it'll be the last thing they ever do move. I can tell you that. Honest? How come? Never mind how come. Just believe what I'm telling you. Quite a while ago, I figured on something like this happening. I'll say that you figure all the angles, Chip. I'll say I do. What the... What the blowout? Ah, the blowout. It's this washboard road. Pull up, Chip. Yeah, right front shoe. We got a spare? Sure, we got a spare. Wait till I get the trunk open. Yeah, this ain't no time to get held up. How long will it take? Oh, 15 minutes, maybe more. Step on it, will you? Hey, wait. What's the matter? There's a car coming up the road. Keep low. What if they stop? No, they won't stop. Hey, Denelli, they're slowing down. They're stopping. Keep quiet. I'll handle this. Hey there, you fellow. You know this road? Spike, roll a bit taller and keep your head down. Yeah. What do you want to know? Uh, how far is it? A little fall. Uh, five miles. You can't miss it. Okay. What to buy? All right. Whew, gee, what's that luck? What do you mean, luck? See the guy in the front seat next to the driver? No, what of it? I ain't sure, but I think it was that newspaper guy. What's his name? Uh, Clark Kent? Yeah. He didn't open his trap, but I bet it was him all right. And didn't I see a kid in the back seat? Yeah. Yeah, there was a kid in there. I don't know who the old guy driving was, but if I'm right and the other fellow was Kent, well, it's a cinch the kid was young Olsen. Gee, well, what are they doing up here? After the lane girl, of course. And she's out somewhere in those woods with a fire getting closer every minute. Well, come on, come on. Don't stand there, Gabin. Get a move on. What are we going to do? Fix this flat. That's the first thing. Then I'm going to turn right around and head back to Little Falls. What? After them? You said it. It's too good a chance. We might get to knock them all off at once. And who'd be left to tell about the racket then? Come on. Get hot with them, too. Mr. Kent, are we anywhere near Little Falls yet? Pretty near, Jimmy. Was it five miles that fellow said, Mr. White? That's right, Kent. We've covered about four of them already. What's troubling me now is how we're going to locate Denali's hideout when we get there. All we know so far is that it's somewhere in Little Falls or near it. Look, Mr. White, isn't that a gas station up ahead? Yeah, we'll pull in. That's as good a place as any to ask questions. All right, we're almost out of gas anyway. There's a man inside. He's coming out now. Evening, gentlemen. Fill her up. Well, you might as well. We don't know just how far we're going. Say, uh, Little Falls anywhere around here? Yes, sir, sure it is. Just about a mile down the road. Keep right at the fork. Forks, mister? Yep. Left hand goes into the woods. Go in there and you stand a mighty good chance of getting stuck. Stuck? Why? Probably muddy. Oh, no, it ain't mud. It's just a mighty narrow, mean road that's blocked. Big tree down across it. How do you know? 
Well, a couple of city fellows went by heading for the city a while ago, and they That's told funny. me. I wonder how they knew. Well, they got a cabin in there. Uh, look here. Uh, these two men, they didn't by any chance come up from the city about four or five hours ago, did they? Why, gee, mister, you must be a mind reader. What? And you're dead right. They did go through just about four or five hours ago. Only there were three of them then. I know because they stopped for cigarettes. Three of them. Kent, do you hear that? Listen, was the third person in their car a girl? Oh, now, quit your kidding. They're friends of yours. You knew them all the time. Was the third person a girl? Was it? Uh, she was. And they drove back just now without her? Yep. Guess they parked her in the cabin. Maybe they're coming back. Hey, hey, where are you going? Where's your phone? Quick. I ain't got no phone. Come back here, Ken. Look here. That was Danelli on the road. That man you stopped to ask directions of. And he's left Lois up in that cabin. We've got to get her out and warn the police. Hey, listen, I don't know what you're talking Never about. Never mind, you'll find out later. Hey, listen, whatever it is, you can't get in that cabin. I tell you the road's blocked. That's right, Mr. White, we forgot. Confound it. Mr. White, look here. We've got to separate. What do you mean, Ken? You take the car, get to the nearest phone. Uh, where is it, mister? Well, now, let's see. Uh, down to Robbins, uh, third house on the left. All right, you phone the police, Mr. White. Tell them to watch all roads back to the city. Well, Ken, what are you going to do? I'm going up the road into the woods. Even if a car can't get through, maybe a man can. I'll go with you, Mr. Ken. No, you stay here, Jimmy. I'll take him with me. No, he'd better stay right here, Mr. White. What's the idea? Jimmy, you watch the road. Keep your eye out for Danelli's car, just in case he takes it into his head to come back again. Mr. Kent, what will I do if he does come? Well, let's see. Hey, you. Uh, have you got a gun? Uh, sure, I got a gun. Only I ain't going to let Never you. Never mind that. Those two men who own that cabin are crooks and racketeers. What's that? You heard me. Now, if that car comes back again while I'm up the road toward the camp, fire your gun three times. Get it? I get it, Mr. Kent. So long, Mr. White. Oh, Kent, when I've made that phone call, I'll come right back. So will I, Mr. White. Meanwhile, I'll see if that tree can be cleared off the road. I'll hurry all I can. <sighs> now then, I'll run a few steps to get out of sight. Oh, poor Lois. If they're holding her in that cabin, but not for long. Well, we know where she is. Ah, uh, this ought to do it. They can't see me from the gas station. If I know anything at all, Danelli's blocked the road on purpose. But he can't block Superman. Up! Up! Leaping into the air, Superman streaks over the darkness of the pine woods, following the dim ribbon of the dirt road below. An odor of smoke is in the night wind, but he pays no heed to that. On through the darkness, then sharply down toward the impassable barrier of a huge fallen tree, blocking off all entrance to the cabin. There. What's that? Looks like a tree. It is. Down right across the road. Well, shouldn't take us too long to get rid of that. Down. Down. Now then, a little hard to get at to work in closer for the trunk. Uh-huh. Full-grown pine, 70 feet long if it's an inch, and three feet thick. Must weigh eight or nine tons. Well, I wonder how far I can throw this tree, like hurling a javelin. What's this? It's a wire. This thing's wired down. That's funny. One for Danelli. Wired that tree to a blasting charge. Blew up right in my face. Anybody else would have been shattered to bits. Good thing dynamite can't hurt me. But maybe it wasn't so good for Danelli. That blast blew the tree right off the road. If I can't get to the cabin now, I... Three shots. That means trouble back at the gas station. Something's happened. Here comes a car. Can't be Danelli. They never make a row like that. Must be the police. Well, whoever it is, all they'll find when they get here is Clark Kent. To think of it, I'd better go to meet them. Just in case Danelli's planted any more surprises. Hey, hold it! What's the matter? Kent, great Scott man. That explosion. Mr. White, how did you hear it? How did you get here? Well, I was on the way back after making the phone call. What happened? Danelli's gang left a charge of blasting powder under the fallen tree. It just went off. And are you all right? Is Jimmy all right? Jimmy? Jimmy's back at the gas station. No, no, he's not. The man said he went after you. But he didn't. I told him to stay there. I know, I know what you told him. But the man said he followed you anyway. If he was in that blast... Mr. White, it's not possible. I would have seen him. He must be in the woods. Jimmy! Jimmy Olsen! Jimmy! Jimmy! Jimmy Olsen! Ken, it's the fellow from the gas station. 
Hey there. Quick, will you? Have you found the boy? No. No, not yet. You fellas got any line on him up this way? Not a thing. Why didn't you keep him with you at the station? Heck, he ain't my boy, mister. He said he was going, and that was that. Uh, what was he trying to do? Well, near as I could make out, he wanted to find that gal you said was in the cabin. How in heaven's name did he think he could do that? Well, he said he'd been a boy scout or something. Knew his way in the woods. And I sure hope he's right. Why? Well, what do you mean? Listen, mister. Can't you smell? Smell? Mr. White, it's smoke. Smoke is right. If you ask me, there's a brush fire smoldering in the woods. Brush fire? Kent, what are we going to do? Mr. White, Jimmy, and Lois. We've got to find them and get them out of there. Kent, I know it, but how? Yeah, and the longer we wait, the harder it's going to get. Kid's gone so far, he can't hear us. You take my advice and get out while you can. When this pine starts to go... What do you want us to do? Leave the boy in the woods? Oh, we've got to find them, both of them. Jimmy! Lord! Oh, that ain't uh, going to do you no good, I'm Jimmy. telling you. If that fire breaks loose, it'll be bad. The wind's coming up, too. Don't stand there talking, man. We've got to find them. Come on, Jimmy! Jimmy! Lord! Lord, play! Jimmy! Jimmy! Recklessly making their way toward the heart of the burning woods, the hollow cries of the rescue party die off in the distance, and almost at once two dark forms appear in the shadowy roadway. Jip Dinelli and his follower Spike, hiding in the darkness, have overheard every word. Dinelli emerges from the trees and calls softly. Spike. Spike, you there? Yeah, right here, boss. You've been here all the time. Listen, do you know where the kid is? Not me. I guess he just did what they said. Is that a break for us? What What do you mean? Listen, I don't know why that fire holds back so long, but it's due to bust any minute now. Yeah, so what are we sticking around for? Just to make sure, that's all. Sure of what? Something called a backfire. It burns out in front of the first fire. When I get that far, they both go out, see? But there ain't anything more to burn. So what? So that's what we're going to do right now. We're good citizens, ain't we? Hey, you ought to know. And good citizens help stop fires. Come on, Spike. Give me a hand here. The wind's just right, too. Right for what? For what we're going to do. We're going to start a backfire, Spike, right here. So it'll carry straight into the woods. Is it our fault if somebody happens to get caught in between? Break up some of that brush. Fast. All unknowing of the peril behind them, Ken and the rescue party head toward the center of the woods, with smoke growing thicker at every step and occasional spark drifting by in the night wind. While farther off, just beyond earshot, young Jimmy Olson stumbles between tall pines, calling desperately for Lois. Suddenly, slightly ahead, he Ms. hears Lane. an answering cry. Miss Lane! Miss Lane, where are you? Here! Here! Who's that phone? Miss Lane, it's me. It's Jimmy Olson. Where are you? Here, Jimmy! Here, this way. Miss Lane. Gosh, is that you? Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, I can't believe. Gee, we've been looking all over for you, Miss Lane. Where in the world did you come from? We came up in a car, me and Mr. Kent and Mr. White. You haven't seen them any place, have you? Jimmy, I haven't seen anybody since I got away. That man, Vanilla, had me tied up in the shack and I got out. What's the briefcase you got there, Miss Lane? Oh, I don't know. It has papers and things, proof of what they've been doing. If we ever get out of here, Jimmy, this briefcase ought to send them all to jail. <coughs> if, if we ever get out of here. I twisted my ankle and, and the fire's coming. What's coming? The woods. The woods are on fire, Jimmy. It started right after I got away from the cabin and it spread to the woods. Oh, gee, let's get going. Come on. Jimmy, I can't. I can hardly walk. But you go. You get out while you can. Go on. What? And leave you here? Not a chance, Miss Lane. Here. You grab my shoulder. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, I can't do Miss it. Miss Lane, you gotta do it. You don't want to stay here and get burned up, do you? Come on. Look, over there, just beyond that little ridge. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, it's the fire. It's coming right this way and fast, too. Listen, get up on your feet. Come on. We gotta make a run for it. Jimmy, go on. Don't wait for me. No, come on. Grab hold of me. Now, this way. Back where I came from. Come on, Miss Lane. Oh, Jimmy, my oh, Thicker and thicker grows the smoke. More and more fiery sparks. A sheet of flame lights up the woods. When suddenly the blue-clad figure of Superman soars high in the blazing forest. If anybody's going to get out of this place alive, including Jimmy and Lois Lane, Superman has to take a hand. Up! Up! I've got to get down there where the fire's hottest and beat it out. After that, maybe I can find Lois and Jimmy. It's got to be fast. Those flames are gaining every minute. Closing in. Ah, there. That looks like a good place. 
I can break through there. Down. Down. Uh, now then, right in the middle of the flames. It's a good thing I don't mind heat. If I can just snatch up a pine tree and use it like a broom. Let's see now. There, that looks like a good one. Sort of do it. Nothing like sweeping up a forest fire with a 50-foot tree. I can just open up a way out through here. Clear a fire lane. Not much time. Here we go. Another We're almost out now. We must be almost out. Jimmy, we're heading in. Look, it's, it's, it's creeping up on this lane of smoke. I can't see. Neither can I. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy Olsen. Miss Lane. Listen, someone is calling. Jimmy, Miss Lane, both of you, this way, quick. Who is it? I can't see. I can't either. I can't see a thing. But it sounds like Mr. Kent. It is. Come on, both of you, quick. Mr. Kent, I can't see. The smoke. Here, catch hold of my hand. You too, Miss Lane. Now, we'll make a run for it. Quick, quick. Hey, Mr. Kent, what's going on? I'm not touching the ground at all. Mr. Kent, what's happening? Come on, come on. I'm carrying you both. Don't stop to ask questions. Now, here comes the hot spot. Hold your breath. We're almost out. Here we go. Oh, oh, we're off. Uh, here's the road. Oh, where's Kent? Kent? Oh, he must Kent. be along. He was right behind us. Oh, say, if we hadn't found that place where the fire was beat out. We're lucky. Luckiest thing I ever saw. But where's Kent? Hey, hey, here he comes now. Through the smoke. Hey, mister. Oh, look. Look. He's got two people with him. Say, it's the kid and the girl. He's got them both. Kent. Kent. Oh, glad to see you got out, Mr. White. Look what I found. Oh, Mr. White. Oh, thank heavens. Mr. White, is, is that you? Yeah, I can't see anything. The smoke is it, it, still in my eyes. You'll be all right. Oh, Kent, I can't believe it. You mean to tell me you found them and brought them out? Gee, you sure did. Both of us. It was like a dream. I thought I was flying. Oh, I don't wonder. We made time, all right. But look here. Where's the car? We're not out of the woods yet. I'll see we're not. Well, the car's this way. Right down the road. Come on. Hurry. All right. Here, let me give you a hand, Miss Lane. Or Jimmy and I'll make a chair. You eh? bet, Mr. Kent. That's the boy. Here we go. Now, there. Okay, right. Chip. What are you going to do now? I still like to know how they got out of that fire. Well, don't ask me how, but they got out. Well, it ain't going to help much. Take it from me. But, Chip, what do you mean? I got one big surprise. Let's fight. Look behind you. See anything in the back seat? No, uh, it's so dark. Oh, wait. Yeah, it looks like a box. Not not very big. Ah, no, it's not very big. But, oh, boy, when that little box does its stuff, that guy Kent and all the rest of them will wish they passed out from the fire. What are you going to do? You'll see. First thing, we got to get out of the main road a couple of miles ahead of them. Give her the gun. Fast. What are you looking for, Jim? A place I remember right along here somewhere. Or a little brook, kind of, runs under the road. You know what I mean. Oh, uh, a culvert? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, that's it, a culvert. And when you find it, then what? Uh, okay, this will plug it. Yeah, yeah, here we are. Pull up. Okay. Well, now what? Listen, Spike. That bunch back in the woods. Kent and his pals. What do you think they're going to do next? Oh, them? Oh, how should I know, boys? Get back to town, maybe. Yeah, get back to town. And they still got the briefcase that Dane took out of the cabin. You know what's in that briefcase, Spike? Well, yeah, yeah, sure I do. Records of the take. How much we got out of the racket. And who we got it from. Yeah, and who went after it, too. See? What do you mean, then? I mean we're all in this dope. You and me and everybody else. Them newspaper guys get back to town with what's in that briefcase. Well, they better not, that's all. Well, listen, boss, that ain't all they can get us for. What about the dame? I yeah, know. We gotta fix up the whole bunch of them. All at one crack. And that's just what we're gonna do, Spike. Hey, give me a hand here. 
Be careful with that stuff. Yeah. You know what it is. No, you didn't tell me. What is it? Just a little box, Spike. You want to plant a little box under this culvert, see? And lead a fuse off in the field behind that fence. Gosh, boy. Just... Then when that bunch of wise guys comes along in their car... Listen, how, how do you know they'll be in a the car? They came in one, didn't they? I could ask silly questions. Hey, look, boy. Uh, how are you going to set the fuse for the exact second that they're over the culvert? Uh, uh, how, how are you going to do that? I don't need to. If there's any place within a hundred feet of where this goes off, they'll be plenty close. Honest? It's something new. Bugsy Leary gave me it to try out when I needed to. Half as big and 20 times as strong as TNT and scatters fire all over the place. Help me lug it down there. Uh, hey, listen, boy. Uh, well, where are you and me going to be when this goes off? Yeah, easy to... Uh, there. I'm going to be out in that field so as I can duck in and grab the briefcase when it comes down and before it burns. What about me? You're going to take this car and go back where we just come from. Hey, listen, Shut what... up and do what you're told. Go back again in them woods. Hide the car and see what's doing. Get it? Okay. If they do what I think they'll do, follow them back here about a half a mile behind. But if they don't, come back quick and tell me, see? They got it. Oh, yeah. One thing more. Some of them might come this way, and some might head for the nearest cop house. If they separate, keep your eye on Kent. Chip, listen. What if he's alone? If he's alone? Well, if he's alone... Do whatever you feel like. I get you. Only make sure it looks like an accident afterward. I get going. You'll be all right? Sure, sure. I can handle the rest of this myself. Get back in the car and head up the road again. Okay. Good luck, boys. They're the ones that need the luck, not us. <laughs> And meanwhile, back in the edge of the woods, safe from the fire, Kent, Lois, Jimmy, and Editor White wait anxiously for some sign of assistance. Now, let's wait just a few minutes more. If nothing happens by then, you can go back to the car, and I'll go scouting around for the police. Gee, Mr. Kent, don't you think we ought to stick together? Oh, we'll be all right now, Jimmy. Those crooks are miles away. They haven't been picked up. What are you doing with the briefcase, Mr. White? Uh, just giving it a quick going over, Kent. Gee, it's too dark to see much. I can tell you what's in it, Mr. White. All we need to get convictions of Benelli and his whole gang. Honestly? No fooling. I'm sure of it. After I turned my ankle, all I could do was sit there. So I went through those papers just in case. In case what, Miss Lane? Well, in case Benelli's men found me again. And I just had to depend on my memories. Say, Miss Lane, you're all right. That must have taken a lot of nerve. Boy, I'll say, knowing they might be along any minute. Oh, well, say, look here. I, I think we ought to be getting on. Great Scott, that's right, Mr. White. We shouldn't wait around here anymore. Uh, the car isn't very far, Lois. Now, if we all gave you a hand, do you think you could make it? I'm really anxious to get started with these papers. Me too, Mr. White. You lean on me, Miss Lane. Oh, I'll be all right, honestly. You're sure? Positive, Mr. Kent. <laughs> Jimmy's as good as a crutch, really. Funny as a crutch is what you mean. Oh, no, go on. This way, I'll pick out the path. Don't forget the briefcase, Mr. White. A few hundred yards down the winding trail, with Lois bravely saying nothing of her injured ankle. And presently, the dim shape of the car looms out of the trees. Kent helps them in... And insists on staying behind. Look here, Kent. What's the idea? Mr. Kent, aren't you coming along? No, I'm staying right here. Just in case the police come in from the other direction. I want to be here to talk to them. But, Mr. Kent... Oh, I'll be all right, honest. Look, you get going. I'll join you later. Well, if you're sure that's the thing to do, Kent... Let me stay, too. You'll stay right in the car, young man. Oh, you want to get back to town as quick as you can, Mr. White. I'll close up any loose ends up here. All right, Kent. Good luck. Goodbye. Goodbye. Take it easy. Bye. Good luck. Yes, one or two loose ends is just exactly right. And I think Superman can do it better by himself than with three other people around. Now then, first of all, I want to know who that was sneaking around in the woods a while ago. Nobody else heard him, but I did. What the right by my ear? Those last two were bullseyes. Lucky for me, they bounce. There's something else that'll bounce, too. That sharpshooter back there in the woods. No good running, my friend. I didn't do it. I didn't mean nothing. Oh, he's flying through the air. Oh, Just a little oh. target shooting, eh? Good, clean fun. Well, now I'll have some fun. Come here. Let me go. 
Quit it. Oh. Well, if it isn't my old friend Spike. Where's Donnelly? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I don't. None of that now. Remember what happened to you last time? No, no, no. Where's Donnelly? I, I don't know. I... All right, then you'll take a ride up in the air. Up. Oh, 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 hey, hey, put me down. What are you doing? He's taking me up in the air. He ain't human. 200 feet up already, Spike. And a long way down. Where's Donnelly? Quick, or I'll drop you. No, no. He, he's back down the road. He's by the culvert. Culvert? What culvert? What's he doing there? He's waiting for the car. Oh, look out. You're all right. As long as you keep talking. Quick, what's Donnelly doing? I tell you, he's waiting for the car. Whose car? White's? Yeah, yeah, look out. Oh. Almost let you go. What's he going to do? Quick. I, I don't know, Alex. I don't. All right, if that's how you feel about it. So long, Spike. Oh, look out. Look out. Look out. Yeah, how'd you like that? Oh, oh, please, please, don't go. You're all right. I caught you, but I may not catch you the next time. Depends on how I feel. Now, what's Donnelly going to do? Last chance, Spike. Here you go. No, 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 I'll talk. I'll check it. He's got a new kind of a bomb. He's, he's going to blow up the car when, when it goes over the culvert. Something new in bombs, eh? And that culvert's only about a mile away. They're almost there. Sorry, Spike, you're due for another ride. No, 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 I, I told you. Honey. Sorry, no time to put you down, but you won't get hurt, not this time. But if you ever say a word about what's happened tonight... I won't, I won't, I won't. Remember that, Spike. And now hang on. We're going to make time. We've got to catch that car. When we do catch them, you're going to warn them while I catch Dinelli, understand? Yeah, yeah, whatever you say, only don't drop me. Don't wiggle, Spike. Up we go. Faster, faster. Still feel all right, Lois? Fine, thanks, Mr. White. Are you heading right back to town? If you don't want to see a doctor. Oh, no. We want to get back to work. Good girl. That's what I think myself. Hey, look. There's a man on the road way down ahead. Oh, no. No, there isn't. I saw him. I saw him, too, Mr. White, down by the little bridge. He ducked down and ran. He sure got swell lights, Mr. White. Well, he's gone now. And here's where I let her out of it. Mr. White, what's the man? Gee, you sure put on the brakes. No, but I didn't. We just stopped. As though somebody grabbed the car from behind. Look, look, there's another man right in front of the headlights. Get back. Get back. Get in reverse, quick. What's he saying? Quick. Hey, dynamite. There's dynamite in the road. Back up, quick. Get away from the culvert, quick. Dynamite. Quick. Hang on, everybody. Quick, quick, look out. Look out. Oh, Gosh, we didn't miss that one by much. That man, he saved our lives. But where's he gone? I'd like to know what in the world kept us from going on to that culvert. Hey, Mr. White, is that you? Kent. Great Scott. Mr. Kent. How'd he get here? We left him back in the woods. Are you all right? Anybody hurt? Gosh, for a minute, I thought surely... Kent, what's going on here? Uh, who's that you've got there? Chip Dinelli, Mr. White. The big boss himself. I found him lying in the field. He was stunned. Chip Dinelli? Yes. But the other man, the one that waved his back. Oh, that was Spike. You remember Spike, Jim. Hey, gee, I, I thought I knew that guy, but... But now he just turned over a new leaf. We found him just after you left. And he told us all about it, so we brought him along by a shortcut. Got here just ahead of you. And he'll back up every word I say. Won't you, Spike? Won't you? Yeah, 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 sure. Say, look. Here come the state troopers. And we've got Spike and Jip Donnelly. And we still got the briefcase, too. Don't forget that. All right, Jimmy. Thanks to you and Miss Lane, the Donnelly gang is smashed for keeps. <laughs> Clark Kent certainly will have a lot to explain this time. Editor White is asking himself questions almost out loud. How long can Superman keep his secret quiet? Time alone can tell. But meanwhile, there's a brand new assignment coming right up as Kent is set out to follow a weird and exciting story. Tune in next time and don't miss it. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.